Welcome to the very first edition of the Rebel Report. In today's show, we'll take a look at how a shorthanded run of Rebel squad defeated their rivals from up north in a nail biter. Before the Thomas and Mack Center filled up, fans donating new stuffed animals, what's the importance of the Tark toy drive? Then we sit down with UNLV football coach Tony Sanchez to chat about the buzz with the upcoming season, as well as getting to know our student athletes a bit beyond what they do on the field. All this and more as the Rebel Report begins right now. All right, welcome to Studio B on the campus of UNLV. This is the very first edition of the Rebel Report, and we're really excited to bring it to you. I'm John Castanino. And I'm Cassie Soto. But before we dive into show number one, we want to tell you what we're all about and what we hope to give you at home. Yeah, that's right. It's every week. It's for a half hour, and our core will be covering UNLV athletics, the games, the events, the athletes and coaches. But we're also here to cover any major sporting event in Southern Nevada and tell stories that you will not see anywhere else. We're students in the Hank Greenspun School of Journalism and Media Studies. We're all striving for careers in journalism. We come from different parts of the country with different backgrounds. Some of us are parents, some of us work full-time, and for now, unfortunately, we all still have homework. And how is the homework in this class? Just curious. Homework's good. I have three journalism classes, a sociology, but... Just this class. Oh, this class. There's a lot, right? Yeah. Good. That yeah. means I'm a slave driver. I'm the <laughs> boss, by the way. Uh, let's get it going now. We're going to start off with some running Rebel basketball. Back on Saturday, UNLV faced the rivals from Reno with just six scholarship players healthy. The Rebel Report's Luis Negret recaps the buzzer beater that sent the time that sent the game into overtime. Despite being shorthanded, UNLV gets the huge win in a thriller and one of the most entertaining games of the season. The Rebels were back at the Thomas and Mack Center to host their in-state rival UNR. Despite being shorthanded due to injuries, including the shoulder injury of Dwayne Morgan, the Rebels pulled off a big win in overtime. You know, six guys that just keep digging in and uh, blocking out the noise and blocking out all the negativity, so to speak, and then all the adversity, and, and they just continue to dig in and give it up and, and give what they have and rally around it. In the first half, Jerome Seegers led the team with 11 points, while Patrick McCall added six points. The Rebels went into halftime with a two-point lead. In the second half, UNR kept things interesting by taking a lead with 11 minutes left to play. But the Rebels got on a roll to keep things going. With a few seconds left in the game, UNR's Marquise Coleman hits a big three to take a three-point lead. But that did not stop Patrick McCall from hitting the biggest shot of the game to send things into overtime. In overtime, the Rebels completely took over the game and finished with a final score of 102 to 91. It was a lot of fun. Um because you know everything the coaches preach like before the game just playing with each other and playing with energy it all it all came into fruition so for us to um, you know come in with that momentum after Pat hit that shot you know it was just big time especially with everything we've got going on with the injuries and stuff so yeah it was definitely a lot of fun is that the biggest shot you've hit in your life no nah, i hit a shot similar probably about middle school but <laughs> yeah i don't think the middle school one was you know probably a little better because the whole middle school just stormed the floor, you know, and lifted me up, so I kind of felt good. But that one was still, it's, it's up there, it's up there. That group deserved it. Just a real emotional locker room. I mean, uh, uh, just so excited with the guys, you know, to see them happy and, and excited and, and, and to be rewarded for, for all the times that they've, they show hardness. We, you know, we talk about the hardness, which is a little bit of a military term, is just, just smile and, and keep keep moving forward through it all. With three games left, this big win could be exactly what they need to get on a roll right before tournament play. From the Rebel Report, I'm Luis Negret. The Rebels took on Boise State on the road Tuesday night. Again, playing shorthanded, the Rebels couldn't pull that one out, losing 81-69. to UNLV now sits 16-13 and with two games left in the regular season. All right, so before that game, the first family of Rebel basketball asked UNLV fans to give some love to children battling illnesses during the Tark toy drive. Since the 70s, the Tarkanian family has been in Southern Nevada headlines and, even after the passing of Jerry, continue to make an impact. The late Jerry Tarkanian was known throughout Las Vegas for his accomplishments as the head coach of the Runnin' Rebels. 
Unfortunately, the city lost the superstar last February after suffering from health complications. Two months after his passing, the family suffered another heartache. The namesake of Tark the Shark, Jerry Jr., had a stroke at the age of five. The family was in disbelief that someone so young could suffer from a stroke, but with the help of University Medical Center, Jerry Jr. was able to pull through. This moment of sadness only lasted so long because with the support the family received from the community, they were assured that everything would be okay. And in order to say thank you for all this support, mother of Jerry Jr., Amy Tarkanian, came up with the perfect plan. As soon as we found out he was going to be okay, in order to kind of calm everyone down, we thought, you know, what would be a great way to kind of bring peace and um, get the community together and involved? Also to say thank you to the doctors and the nurses at University Medical Center of Southern Nevada. And I had a girlfriend of mine who was a doctor and she said, you know, why don't we just do something as simple as a toy drive? There's so many kids that are in the hospital daily that need comfort. Why don't we do that? And I said, you know what, that's a really good idea. Tark Toy Drive was in full effect during the UNLV men's basketball game versus Reno, where fans were asked to bring a new stuffed animal to the game and in exchange would receive a goodie bag from the Children's Hospital of Nevada. The toy drive could not have been more of a success, with nearly 10 bags full of stuffed animals ready to be delivered to children who could use a new friend by their side. As for the health of Jerry Jr., Amy explains that he is just like any other six-year-old. He's doing wonderful. The only permanent damage that we're aware of at this time is it took away the lower left peripheral vision in both eyes, but it doesn't seem to bother him. The guy loves school. He's the top reader in his class. He plays baseball and he's a lefty, so fortunately the ball comes at his right and he doesn't it doesn't seem to bother him. So he's he's definitely one of my heroes and and he's a he's a tough kid. Fresno State and Valley Children's Hospital in Madera, California are also participating in the toy drive that Amy hopes to be held annually right before the start of the Mountain West Conference Tournament. All right, we're going to move on now. Let's go to Victoria Bass for a look at the upcoming Rebel Baseball season. Vicki. Last weekend, Rebel Baseball went 1-2 and two in their three-game season opening series against 23rd-ranked Texas. Now they hope to come back stronger than ever for their home opener on Friday and for the rest of the season. UNLV's Rebel Baseball team has a new energy and chemistry this season that they believe will lead them to success. Well, we've had a couple good years since I've been here, and then we had a down year, and this year it's looking like we've really come together as a team. We look really good. Mm -hmm. um, our chemistry is really good, and we're uh, going to be put to the test. So we got a new energy. I mean, we had a lot of things happen in the offseason, um, but this year we have a lot of, a lot of chemistry. Um, our team really gels this year. we got a, bu a good bunch group of guys. Um, and uh, I think we're all in it together. That's, that's the biggest part this year that we, we believe in each other and we got each other's backs. The team unity is really good. We're getting great leadership out of our older, older guys and, uh, and uh, the younger guys have bought in. Right now, the morale is very good. The one thing that I can see and the coaches too is that the kids have really bought in. And when the kids are buying in, you have a much better chance of winning. So that's the bottom line. It comes down to winning, execution, and you got to have your kids buying in to the, to, the, to the system, and that's what we've really done. With the new year comes new strategies that help secure the team's wins this season. We're going to pitch. Uh, top three or four, five, six arms are pretty good and are going to give us a chance. And, uh, and if our freshmen that played last year step it up a little bit, I, I think we'll do well enough offensively to, to you know, have a chance in most ball games. We're going to take it game by game and uh, obviously shooting for a regional, super regional, but we're just going to do everything right. We're going to try and be better than that team that day. But the main thing is staying healthy and staying bought into the system. We'll be fine. That's right. This baseball season is coming at you full swing at the Earl E. Wilson Stadium for the home opener this Friday at 6 p.m. against West Virginia. Make sure to get your tickets at UNLVtickets.com. Back to you, Cassie. Soccer idols from around the world recently stepped into our own Sam Boyd Stadium for an exhibition match. Here's Re Rebel Reports' Natalia Lancelotti with a look at the Global Legends series. Las Vegas is recognized as the city of entertainment, but tonight at the Sam Boyd Stadium, locals are honored with good soccer. The world's most decorated and accomplished international players come to our city for its first time. Uh, football in America is, is growing 
and in Las Vegas it's a very nice city and I hope to, uh, to have a good game. I think soccer, I think soccer in, this in this country, country is steadily, steadily growing. growing. Uh, we're, not we're not seeing, seeing it take, take off crazy, crazy, but we're, we're seeing, seeing good, good consistent, consistent, positive, positive growth. growth. The Global Legends Series is a sequence of soccer exhibitions between two teams of legendary soccer players from around the world who have won the biggest competitions and are followed by the most loyal of international fans. It's great to come to Las Vegas, a team that doesn't see Major League Soccer, doesn't see the national team, doesn't see global legends like this. It's great to see people come out and support it, and it shows me that people care about this sport in America. The player criteria to qualify for the Global Legends Series is to have won the World Cup on his national team, won the Champions League or a European Championship, or made at least 50 international appearances for his country. GLS Las Vegas featured two teams, one team captained by American soccer star Landon Donovan with players such as Marco Materazzi and also the Mexican star Jared Borghetti and the other team captained by Barcelona and Real Madrid Portuguese legend Luis Figo, playing with Patrick Kluivert from Netherlands, Alessandro Del Piero from Italy, and one of the best goalkeepers of the world, Mexican Oswaldo Sanchez. These legends come together to compete in matches around the world in support of charities. Locally, this game will benefit Boys and Girls Club of Southern Nevada. Worldwide, GLS benefits Free the Children, an organization that helps families and communities lift themselves out of poverty. Reporting for The Rebel Report, Natalia Lancelotti. This is unusual for our city, but we hope soccer grows along with the support of the people. Now, let's send it over to John with our very first guest of the show. All right, thanks, Cassie. So we've got our first guest here on the Rebel Report. Really excited to have UNLV football head coach Tony Sanchez come in here. Uh, coach, you're our guinea pig. You didn't have to wait too long, which is great, but what do you think of our setup here so far? Uh, it's fantastic. No, I'm really excited to be here. It's a great setup, and uh, our goal is to be number one, so it's good to be at show number one. So, so we're excited. Perfect. <laughs> now, we have got a ton to talk to you about. We've only got about six minutes or so, but really want, kind of want to backtrack just briefly season one for you what's the biggest thing you learned as a division one head college football coach well you know I mean it wasn't the football end of it the football end of it wasn't a lot different it's just there's a lot of other management things and really it's recruiting process during the season I mean so much of what we do on a daily basis seven days a week throughout the season is recruiting and it paid off but just making sure you're staying organized and on top of that and devoting the time you need to to really win there because eventually you win enough of those battles you start winning on Saturdays yeah amen to that so Three wins last season, you know, some people can look at that and be critical of it and not be happy with it, but we've talked about it numerous times throughout the season. Your football team was basically in every single game uh, that, that past season, and you have to be proud of that. Yeah, yeah, I'm proud of the way the guys fought, and absolutely, our expectations are obviously are a lot more than three, but, you know, if you're a Rebel fan, you know, three seems like it's a, it's a lot, unfortunately, you know, so did some good things, won the can and brought it home, like you said, you know, there were six games, there were seven-point games in the fourth quarter, so we're getting close, we taught them how to fight, now we got to teach them how to finish. Yeah, and there's a lot of buzz about this coming season, obviously, based on the recruiting class that you had, 23 athletes, 10 three-star recruits, a lot of people already saying, arguably this could be the best recruiting class in UNLV history. Just talk about everything that kind of went into putting it such a great class together. Well, we, we hope, you know, the outcome is that it is the best recruiting class. We'll find out a couple years down the road after these guys develop. But, you know, again, it's a lot of management. You know, our, our assistant coach is doing a great job going out and identifying players. And not just identifying players, but you, you got to make sure these are the type of guys that are going to fit our program. You know, identifying guys who can obviously play, but have the right character. They, they have the right work ethic. They've got, a, you know, a level of toughness that's going to mesh with our philosophy and what we're doing. And, and we really feel like we got a really special group of guys who are going to come in and help the current players get to that next level. So um, I'm excited about it. All right. And obviously you've improved at a lot of positions, but you know, the one position everybody looks at first is quarterback, obviously with Johnny Stanton and Armani Rogers coming in. 
to the guys that you already have on the roster. There's a lot of depth there now, something that you didn't have last year. It's you know, just night and day. I mean, you go into the last game and you've got, you know, you, you've got, you know, our starter Blake and then you've got Kurt and then you've got a red shirt and that's it on the sideline. A whole different deal going into camp this year, you know. So we're excited. Kurt's a year older. He'll be a year better, you know. Um, Johnny Stanton is phenomenal. I mean, he threw for 3,400 yards, rushed for 700, you know, spent some time in Nebraska and Saddleback. And, you know, he, he's got a great opportunity to come in 6'3", 245. I mean, big physical guy. And then Armani Rogers, that was a hard fought, fist fought battle to the end, and we ended up winning on him. And we're excited again, 6'5, 208, um, great arm. We got to do a great job of developing him mentally, and uh, you know, and we add that to the physical that he already has. I think we got a great future ahead at that position. So the class as a whole, and going out and recruiting and getting these three star recruits. How tough was it? How easy was it to go in there and sell UNLV to these guys? You know, uh, again, the hardest thing is battling these other schools. But as far as selling UNLV, it's not a hard sell. I mean, you think about it, it's a vibrant city, blue skies, sunny weather. You know, we're three and a half to four hours from Southern California, where we've got the majority of our guys from. Um, you think about postgraduate opportunities here in the West, you know, in the Southwest area. Um, this is a great place to raise a family. You know, when you bring mom in, and that's the most important thing, is getting mom to be comfortable with it. The kids love it, but you get mom here, and she gets to drive around the city and see how family-oriented we are. And, you know, we talk about all our successes in this great university and this beautiful campus and, you know, the growth of it, the excitement with our new president. And, you know, there's so many great things ahead with the med school coming in, what you guys are doing here. It's just a reflection of this great university, and it's easy to sell. We just got to expose them to it. All right, spring ball coming up in just a couple weeks. Again, we know you're starting to ramp up yeah. uh, for next season now. Um, having one year under your belt, going through spring drills, and your team going through your system, how far ahead of the curve do you think your guys are going into spring ball here? Well, you know, I think the biggest jump we're ever going to make is between year one and year two. After that, I think there'll be incremental jumps, right? But between year one and year two, they know me, they know my philosophy, they know our coaches, they know our level of expectation, the way we want things done, um, j just from, from being on time and being prepared and, you know, from the meetings and the way they handle themselves. And again, one, you know, the majority of your guys, 75%, are now one year into the system. So it won't be so foreign to them. It's not all brand new. So we'll be better because of that. And then the seven junior college guys that are already here on campus immediately, you know, add an impact to our group. So it's exciting. Do you have the countdown clock in your office to Jackson State already? Oh, yeah, believe me. We, we, we've <laughs> talked about it. We've already started watching film on them, yep. and it's, uh, it's an exciting thing. I mean, we're competitors at heart, and after all the recruiting and doing these type of interviews and stuff, what we want to do is we want to get in that tunnel and go out and play some football. So we're excited about getting there. All right, one last question. Yep. The on-campus stadium you have. Uh, Sheldon Adelson, you have Mark Davis all talking about this. How exciting is it, whether or not it gets done? I mean, we're praying that it gets done, but just to have this buzz about possibly getting this new billion dollar facility for UNLV football to use. How jazzed do you get with that? I'm fired up. I mean, it, it, again, it, it, I think it's an amazing time to be a rebel. And, uh, you know, th those conversations, and we'll see where it goes. We're hoping that it comes to fruition. We love Sam Boyd, but, you know, if we move forward, if that stadium gets built, it can be a special thing. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing bigger in America than college football, and we need to get in that fight. Amen to that. Coach, I appreciate it. Again, our guinea pig, you did a great job, Coach. Appreciate it. We'll have you back uh, sometime in the fall. Still a lot ahead. Shortly a fun segment with a soccer athlete giving us an exclusive look at what will make her tough to beat on the field. But let's go back to the desk and learn about the Rebel Athlete of the Week, Cassie. Each week, UNLV awards Outstanding Rebel of the Week to the student athlete who turned in their best individual performance during the previous week of competition. Let's check out who received the honors. UNLV has awarded their Outstanding Rebel of the Week award to sophomore softball player Janine Petmecki. Janine Petmecki collected a dozen hits during the team's first six games with a 700 on base percentage. She had at least one hit on all six games and reached base all four times in the team's home opener against Texas Tech with three singles and a walk. It means a lot. I actually found out later than everyone else, but it was really cool. It was really. I wasn't expecting it at all, so I was just out there playing the game and then I got that, so it was really cool. Uh, it's big, big time, and she deserved it, well deserved. Uh, she had a great weekend and had another good weekend here, so we're proud of her and uh, hopefully we can keep that up, <laughs> have more of them. She also had her first home run of the season in a team's 6-1 win against Syracuse. And in her 20 appearances at bat, she didn't strike out once. Head coach Lisa Dot says that Pedmecki's multidimensional play makes her a vital asset to the team's success. She's just irreplaceable. She plays, um, she hits, she pitches, she plays first. I mean, she and, and outfield. She played outfield for us last year. She literally can do it all, and uh, she's a gamer. You know, she's she's at her best when the game's on the line, and um, you know, is, is big for us in that way too. I was seeing the ball really well, so I thought that showed. 
UNLV softball currently sits 7-4 and four as they have to Tampa, Florida on February 26th and 27th to play at the USF tournament. For the Rebel Report, I'm Barbara Farkas. UNLV softball will return to Eller Media Stadium on March 3rd to play Southern Utah as they take part in the Alexis Park Resort Classic. All right, so the Rebel Girls are nothing short of awesome. The team recently won its fourth national hip-hop championship in Orlando, Florida. Here's the Rebel Report's Nakaya Berry with a feature on our champs. The Thomas and Mac is home to more than just the UNLV running Rebels. The championship title Rebel Girls are making moves on and off the court. You kind of go out there and your body just like naturally goes and you kind of like black out in the moment and you walk off and you're like man what did I just do there what the rebel girls did was win the national title at the 2016 Universal Dance Association College National Championship you can only imagine what was going through their mind during the performance oh my gosh I don't even know how to describe that it's literally the combination of nerves and excitement and energy when they called our name literally it was just like a whole weight had been lifted because we literally have been working so hard over winter break so it really was just like a huge relief this year the rebel girls focused more on their dance ability as opposed to partner tricks kind of showing that you know we can give texture through like hard hitting movements but like soft movements while also dancing to like biggie smalls and then tying it in with like um, Drake songs so having old school with new school. This is the fourth national title for the UNLV athletics dance team. The two previous years they finished as runner up in division 1A hip hop. But this year it was so different. It was like we walked out there with like all the confidence in the world. We said you know like we, we kept chanting like this is our house. It was so surreal, but I, I already knew, I'm like, man, this feels really, really good. <laughs> and to re-win a championship and bring it back home to Vegas is a great experience, especially since Vegas doesn't have pro teams. Winning the national title shows perseverance. We really, really push ourselves to our limit, and like we never like give up or take no as an answer. It looks like the Rebel Girls are giving its competition and its audience something to look forward to. So sit back and enjoy the show. Reporting for the Rebel Report, I'm Nakaya Berry. Thanks, Nakaya. Great story there. Now, if you missed the Rebel Girls Championship performance, you can check it out on varsity.com. Also, look out for the Rebel Girls, of course, performing throughout the rest of the basketball season on the court. Time to lighten things up a bit. We wanted to get a closer look at what makes our UNLV athletes so great at what they do. The Rebel Report's Joanne Mendoza, she met up with someone from the women's soccer team to show us her favorite moves. Ever wonder how soccer players get their favorite moves or tricks on the soccer field? Well, today we talk with senior Susie Bernal, who gives us an inside look on what her moves are on the field. We're here at the Peter Johan Memorial Field with a member of the UNLV women's soccer team, Susie Bernal. Hey, Susie. Hello. <laughs> are you excited to be here today? I am. I'm very excited to be here and have this opportunity to show you guys my moves. We're excited to see you. Those were some great jukes Susie had. I can't wait to see her show them off the rest of the season. Yeah, we're going to have more feature stories like that, obviously, throughout uh, the show here on the Rebel Report. And again, that women's soccer team matchup is for March 5th. Now, as we wrap up show one, we want to take a moment to pay tribute to two uh, members of the UNLV family that lost their lives this month. That's UNLV Athletics Hall of Famer teacher and administrator Fred Albrecht. He passed away uh, February 5th after a long battle with cancer. And former UNLV football assistant coach and longtime Rebel booster Rich Abadjan, he died February 9th. We had the chance to talk with UNLV Athletic Director Tina Kunzer-Murphy about what the pair meant to the university. 
We lost two wonderful human beings. Fred, you know, just gave his heart and soul to UNLV. I mean, just, he was the guy that got everything done. He built TAM Center, and built the amphitheater. He helped us get all organized for the Tarkanian statue. Rich was my mentor and my confidant and all this, and so many people I talked to said the same thing. Rich had this magic about him that he made everybody think that you're really special. You know, it's like your mom or dad that you got 10 kids and he loved every one of them. We're all saying the same thing. Our hearts are broken because this man was so generous and so kind. And I know both those men will dearly be missed uh, in the UNLV athletics program, Definitely. but that's it. Show one in the books. Great work. <laughs> Great work to everybody here, all our students. Again, this is a student production, so really I'm the boss of everything, but these guys kind of run the show, and I think they did a great job. Next week, we'll have a couple great feature stories about UNLV battling both breast cancer and leukemia, so please tune in next week for that. And be sure to follow us on our social media accounts, including YouTube channel Rebel Report UNLV. We'll see you all next week. Thank <laughs> you.